Hey guys, and welcome to TechCast. In this video, I want to tell you about the different methods of backing up your iOS device and give you detailed instructions of how to do so. In my opinion, backing up your data is an absolute must. You have so much important data on your devices, from pictures to passwords to phone numbers, data that if you lose it, could perhaps not be replaced or only with many hours of work. And in this video, I'll talk all about backups for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and the Apple Watch, because they're all very similar. All right, so first, it's important to know that there are two standard methods to back up your device. There are more out there, but in this video, I want to focus on the first party methods, meaning the backup possibilities you have that Apple offers directly. So it won't require you to buy any third party software or anything like that. Now, all you need is your Apple device, a lightning cable, as well as iTunes installed on your PC or your Mac. And this brings me to the first method, iTunes. iTunes is a free software from Apple that comes pre-installed on any Mac and that you can download for Windows for free. I'll provide the link in the video description down below if you don't already have it. iTunes has the advantage that it stores your backups locally, meaning that it'll save the backup right onto your computer. And because it uses your computer storage, it won't cost you anything to create the backup. On the downside, your device will of course not perform this backup automatically. You have to plug in your phone or whatever device you're using and actively back it up frequently to make sure you always have all your latest data saved and backed up. So to back up your device using iTunes, connect the device to your computer using the lightning to USB cable, and then open iTunes if it didn't already open itself automatically. Next, you wanna click on the little icon that appears there in the top upper left corner I plugged in my iPad, which is why the icon looks like a little iPad, but this will change depending on what device you're backing up. Now in the summary screen, you'll notice different backup options right here. If you want to back up your device onto your computer, make sure this computer option is selected on the left hand side. And then you have the option of encrypting the backup, which has the advantage that it will also back up the password stored in your device, such as Wi-Fi networks your phone has previously connected to, and any health data you may have saved on your phone, which it will only back up if you choose to encrypt the backup. Now on the downside, you have to select and create a password for the backup, which if you forget it means you can't access that backup anymore and the backup becomes essentially useless. My advice is that you encrypt the backup, but just be sure to remember your password well. Once all that's selected, to your preference, just click the Backup Now button, and that's it. iTunes will begin backing up your device. Once it's complete, you can head into the iTunes Preferences, select Devices from the menu at the top, and you'll have an overview of all the backups present on your computer with a timestamp on the right-hand side of when the backup was created. That way you can be sure that it worked. Now let's get to the second method of backing up your device, which is iCloud. If you use iCloud, instead of saving all your backups onto a computer you own, your device will save a backup file to Apple servers, which can only be accessed with your Apple ID credentials, which are your email and the password you selected. Now, iCloud has the advantage that your backup is automatically encrypted using your Apple ID password, meaning that it will automatically include your passwords and health data, and your device will back up your data automatically once a day, without you even thinking about it. This happens every time you plug in your device to charge, you have it connected to your Wi-Fi network, and the screen's powered off. Notice how I say screen powered off, not the entire phone or iPad. You just want to click the sleep-wake button to power off the screen. Now, the catch is that you need enough storage in iCloud to actually fit your backup. Every Apple ID gets 5 gigabytes of free storage in iCloud when signing up, but depending on the photos, the amount of photos and the apps you have on your phone, it can quickly exceed the free five gigabyte limit. And in that case, you have to purchase extra storage in iCloud. Extra iCloud storage isn't terribly expensive, but when you go beyond the free five gigabyte limit, it is a recurring monthly cost. So for the rest of this video, I'm assuming that you have enough iCloud storage available to you. And of course, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my very best to answer them. So to back up your device using iCloud, make sure your device is connected to Wi-Fi and then head into the settings of your device, scroll down and click on iCloud. Then select backup at the bottom of the page and make sure the backup option is toggled on. 
That's it, your device will now automatically back up your files once it's plugged in for charging, connected to Wi-Fi, and the screen turned off. If you wanna back up the device right away, you can also press the backup now button and it will do just that. Once you have your device backed up, it will even tell you when the last backup was completed right below. The backup options we just talked about are identical for any iOS device you have, no matter if it's an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod. Even with the Apple Watch, it's not really different. Assuming your Apple Watch is connected to your iPhone with Bluetooth, which it has to be to work, the Apple Watch content backs up automatically to the iPhone, so whenever you back up your iPhone with either iTunes or iCloud, you're actually backing up your Apple Watch as well. There's nothing you have to do separately. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. It's always appreciated. And be sure to subscribe for more videos coming soon. I'll catch you in the next one.